Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. Inside this box is a smart bracelet. We have been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. I could buy 10 of these and hand them out to people on the street, toss them into open convertibles, driving around in the snow. Anybody that's willing to take this and put it on for 15 bucks roughly, between 15 and $20 per watch, this is a great gift. For you, it's an awesome keeper. What's inside this box? That little thing right there. Let me tell you about it. It's called the Bakey E33. Comes to us from Banggood. Thank you, Banggood. Oh my goodness, you're, you're really great with what you're coming through with these days. It's an ECG heart rate monitor, does blood oxygen, does pulse rate, does blood pressure, does fitness, long standby, bright screen, solid construction. I can't say enough about this one. And look at the price. And if we can get it lower, we will. And if it goes higher, it's still a darn good deal. Uh, buy it. That's all I can say. If I didn't own it, I'd be buying it, you know, and Mr. Tix, uh, that's something when I say that. Um, here's some of the specs, and look, it's using a new app called WearFit 2.0. We'll be looking at that here in a moment. It does uh, Bluetooth uh, 4.0, does Android and iOS connection. There's all kinds of languages supported. It uh, has a special ECG chip that it's using now inside. And it supports all these other functions, as we mentioned. It's got notification capability. It does vibrate, doesn't make noise, but it does vibrate. And it keeps you aware of what's going on through that vibration. It's got a G sensor, heart rate sensor. There's the ECG chip again, if you want to do research on it. Look at this, standby, about 15 days. Use time is about seven to 10 days. Wow. Really nice. Really, really nice. All right, let's take it out. First of all, I really like the packaging. It's a nice box. It's just sitting in here by itself, and it won't come out. <laughs> I tried that. I have to actually do this, take the cover out that has the, the, the styrofoam where it sits in there, and grab the module like this. It's got the ECG plates on the side that you have to hold with one hand, you know, and then complete the circuit, either using it without the bands and just touching it right to the fleshy part of your wrist, or when you put the bands on, of course, it's going to be on your arm, and you can do your ECG readings right there. It's got a manual. We'll take a look at that in a minute. A little bit of fuzz. Oh, the charger. I've been charging it. I'll go get that in a moment. And it's got the two bands with Quick Connect for 15 bucks, guys. Quick Connect bands, which means you could use any band of the right size, probably 22 millimeters. I'll measure that for you. I'll put it in the show notes if I don't do it on the video. And uh, we've got ourselves a working uh, smartwatch. In the manual, we've got it all in Chinese, of course, and on the back side, we have it in English. Really tiny print, but I'm hoping that when we zoom in on it here, you'll be able to read it. Okay, basic functions. It's a simple to operate, one touch button device. Seems to work really well moving between the modes. Um, you can activate the testing functions from the app or from the band itself. And of course, when you're out in the field, it's going to capture that stuff and hold it until you sync it with the band. There's the manual. All right, I'm gonna put it together and then we'll turn it on and check it out. As promised, here's the little charging clip. This is the only awkward thing about it. It's got this uh, specialized clip that has to line up with the pins here and it's gotta do it in a way that you're clamping it over the screen, which is padded and they land right in there, clips on like this. It's actually pretty easy. You plug it in and it charges. It doesn't have the magnetic coupling. You wanna make sure it doesn't twist around too much. There's spring pins right there, but it will charge. Oh, and it just turned it on too, <laughs> okay. Uh, otherwise we would have pressed and held the button here in the front to turn it on. And look how bright that screen is already. It's sensitive, it's already moving forward. Okay, let's walk through it. You see I got the band on, so I'll show it to you in a minute with it on. 
There's the step count. It's tiny numbers. That's a little bit of a drawback, but it's showing your calories, uh, distance traveled in kilometers, and step count on that screen. Here's the screen for measuring the ECG, and I'm sorry it's washed out. You can see if I get it just right. And look at the screen. It's viewable from the side, and it's super bright. There's the ECG measurement one, which is kind of an orange colored backing. Here's the uh, heart rate, same kind of thing. It's going to give you the digits down below in pretty small uh, size, um, but it's still readable. Uh, blood pressure, blood oxygen, your overall sleep time from last night, if you sleep with it, light, um, all, and deep, I guess. And then a sports section. When we long press here, it's going to let us drop into uh, outdoor running mountaineering i guess that's mountain climbing and notice it's going to give you time versus calories uh, here's outdoor cycling and then return so not a whole lot of stuff but it's there if we do outdoor running we press and hold it's going to kick in now it's timing it it's not giving you your blood uh, heart rate during the exercise but it's basically going to time your workout and give you estimated calories burned without probably taking into consideration your physiology and everything else so as a fitness fan it's pretty lame okay i wouldn't i wouldn't count on it for much but if you want a built-in timer you've got it right there let's cycle through here to the return button press and hold to return back to the upper level of sport and then we come over here if you have any messages pushed from your phone you'll get them right here and then there's others when we long press here we've got a stopwatch that we can use a find your phone feature when you're tethered long press to activate that your off button your bluetooth information when you tether to the app you're looking for e33 and a return button there I know all of this we've covered in the quick little one minute uh, review uh, and then you're back to the watch face itself. So that's how this operates. Um, when you put it on, it's going to look like this on your arm. And I'm sure you're eyeballing those cute little calipers over there, aren't you? I brought them over so we can do a few different measurements. Let's turn that puppy on, zero it out. And as I promised, the bands, if you want to get your own bands for this, look for, what are we getting? 1952, we're right at the edge, 19 and a half. That's interesting. It's probably 20. If I go to 20 on the calipers, which is about right there, would it fit? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're looking at a... 20 millimeter band to put on it. It's a thin little thing coming in at, let's call it what, 12, about six, 11 and a half millimeters. And size wise, width, including the ECG buttons or pads on the side, 33.7, about 34 by, what do we got here? Uh, 42. Yeah, that should give you an idea. It looks small. It's about like a the smaller Apple Watch. Goes this way with the button at the bottom. Uh, the band is really cheap. i got to admit that. It's kind of a rubbery thing. It's not uh, any kind of fancy leather thing. But there's a lot of holes in it. They're pretty close together. I can get a, a good fit if I want a little looser fit. Come back a notch. Come here. And now we got some play. That's probably fine for doing our overall measurements, which we're ready to do, aren't we? Let's go in here. Come on over to the ECG. I'm going to long press to start it, it says. Holding, holding. Yeah, long press to start. Let's try that again. Got to make sure the plates are on my back side. There we go. It's measuring. And the trick, of course, is you need to hold the uh, plates on the other side with your other arm. And hold relatively still and not talk if you want a good chart. The one that you're seeing flashing on the screen is simulated. 
That's just an icon going. That is not your actual chart. We have more expensive devices we've reviewed that show you your actual heart wave in green, you know, um, great, great watches out there and bands that will produce the chart on the screen for you as well as actually take the measurement for transferring to the app. But in this case, it's accumulating the data and it takes like a whole minute. There we go, successful measurement. And now it's stored in here so we can transfer it later. We press and hold to get out of that, I guess. He says, there we are. And then you come over and we've got heart rate, which we could measure, uh, blood pressure, which we can measure, and blood oxygen, which we can measure. It'll all be the same with tiny little results right there, but I'm going to show you all that in the app. Again, last night's sleep time and so forth, the sports and everything. So that's pretty much how this works. It's got a little screen cover we haven't even taken off yet. Not a screen protector, but just a little plastic cover. Now, I've had this out and about for a day, uh, and I've collected some data on it. And we're going to show you that in a moment. But first, I've only been touching this button so far, but I want to show you this. The screen itself, the actual um, time display, is changeable, but not through pressing the button and going through the different screens. You literally have to press and hold the button. It's going to vibrate and flash, and now we're in the editing mode. With the touch sensitive screen, I can switch to this watch face or this one or back to the original. So this inexpensive band watch has both a uh, touch screen capability, there it locked itself in, and um, button technology, which is really, really cool. Let's, uh, oh. There we go. We're, we're going through them now, all of the different ones. And there's no way to go back, but you can use the touch screen to go forward. Either way you press it, it's going to go in a forward direction until it gets back to time. Once again, press and hold, 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 flashes, and we can switch to which one you want. That one? Okay, switch to that watch face. So for the next part, we'll do that. Cool. Now let's bring over the app. If you think this thing is amazing, wait till you see this updated app. This is uh, Wear Fit. It's in the uh, show notes. You'll get the link that'll take you directly to here. But I wanted to show you there is an original Wear Fit app. And then there's this new one, Wear Fit 2.0. That's the one we're going to use. You can get to it just typing in Wear Fit 2 or you can scan the QR code that's in the manual, any which way you want to do it. I recommend you definitely get it from the Google Play Store, though. And our show note link will take you directly into here. And when you're in here, um, you basically have an overview of what the app is and how it works. And then you can open it. Once you have it installed, you get an opening page that allows you to do a few different things. You can bind the bracelet if you haven't yet directly. You can create a third-party login into the app, or you can enter directly. Now, I've already bound it. I could enter directly, but I want to show you the binding process. So I'm going to go here. You're going to see it flash a whole bunch of stuff here. E33 is the one that uh, this one goes by, and <laughs> it's bound. It's there, and we're automatically now in the app connected to the watch. We have three pages on here, a home, kind of a floating page. It's not a separate page, but you'll see that. And then a me, which is where you set everything up. The home page is where you have all the little chiclets that have all the different measurements. And like I said, I've had this on for a day now, so I've even got some last night's sleep time to show you as well. Wow, where do we begin? Um, let's begin over here in the me, because this is where you can set all this stuff up. You can log in, like I said, set up your own account. You have your personal information. It repeats your height, your weight, and your goal up here. But if you go in here, you can set all of those different uh, parameters up, as well as choose miles, inches, pounds, or uh, English, British. You can specify the time you are going to fall asleep and wake up. I don't believe it automatically detects those times for you. We'll check that 
when we get into the actual report. But I set it for 10 o'clock at night to 7 in the morning just to test it out. Um, that's the personal information. You save it there and you leave it here. Exception details. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay, now I've got some reports. This is in case you do a test, I guess, and it comes out with an, uh, something that you should be aware of, like a heart rate too low, which I got at the 7 o'clock and 6 o'clock measurement, which was happening, I guess, automatically, because I think I have it set up for that. Before, it would say uh, there wasn't anything in there when I tried it yesterday. Now it does. Now we see what it is. It's exceptions to being normal. Uh, so it accumulates that information. You don't have to hunt for it. Puts it right there. Here's your device information. I'm at 80%. It's long life battery on this. I'm impressed. You notice it's not turning on when I twist it. That's because that's turned off currently. Here it is. Hand up screen. And now, <clears throat> and now, <clears throat> well, when it gets to it, once it gets updated, it'll do that. Connection management is where you can specify and disconnect the band if you want to connect something else. And you have smart reminders in here too. For tethered to your phone, it will tell you or notify you of a call, messaging. You can do the lost reminder if you're separated and you're out of Bluetooth range. You have alarm clock, sedentary reminders, all of your different app notifications. And you can set quiet hours of when you don't want to be interrupted. I told you this is a cool app. These are a lot of features in this one. I'd love to see in other ones. Um, you can set up, for me, I set for 6 p.m. to the next day at 7 a.m. that it won't uh, interrupt me. And you can turn that on and off, save it, set it however you would like. That's in, in, in the smart reminders. Hand screen is that twist your wrist to light the screen. Hourly measure, okay, that's just an on and off toggle to measure your various stats. And uh, we know heart rate is one of those. And then you can check for firmware upgrade. This currently is running 503, and that seems to be the latest one. All right, and that is in the device management tab. Then you get into settings. Now in here, we can have 12 or 24 hour time. You can tie it to Google Fit if you want to transfer the data over there or connect it to WeChat running, which is a different app, I presume. Clear it, clear the cell phone data, reset the bracelet, and I don't know what the current phone is, but uh, that takes you to a page that doesn't exist. Okay. But basically, that's just for clearing out your data. Oh, did I go further out? No. Oh, all right. And then about. About is your version of the app and edition checkings to update the app if you need to. Feedback and help are all available in here. Okay. That's this whole tab there. You see your battery percentage rate. Uh, up here I have weekly report and measure. I'm also going to see those when I come over to here. So I'm going to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm off screen. Uh, weekly report and measure show up in both these tabs. And I'm going to uh, cover those on this page here. But first, I want to go through it. What do we got? The big step count. This is our daily step count and our daily goals uh, in terms of miles and calories burned. So that's all the pedometer information. Then you get down into these categories. I can go into sleep, show you. This is, gets really cool now. I'd love to see this done in more apps. Of course, it's missing a little bit. It doesn't have the rim sleep. It's getting your light sleep and your deep sleep and your total sleep time. But it does make an assessment of the quality of your sleep, and mine was poor. I didn't have very much deep sleep time at all. But it does show you the hours and a little bars according to when you were in those different zones, right? And the, uh, the orange is the lowest and the middle and then the highest based on how deep you're sleeping. But there's more. There's the actual breakdown of each of these separated by minute. So this is chronological, and it's happening from when you go to sleep. At uh, For 59 minutes, I was in light sleep that started at 2214. Okay, so even though I set my sleep time in that one area, it looks like it kicked in, realizing that I actually went to sleep at 2214 and stayed that way 
until I fell into deep sleep, 12 minutes, into it. You getting the picture, how that works? Then light sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, deep sleep. That's all of those things till I was awake near morning hours and went back to bed and had some light sleep. So if you really, really want to drill down into any of these, they don't click any further than that, but your entire synopsis of your night's uh, activity to the minute, to the second, is listed here in fine detail. Plus you get the chart and then you get the summary breakdown. And you can export all that if you'd like to. And that's your daily one. You also have weekly, and it's going to show you a bar graph with your different categories here, and your summary by month. So if you do this, if you wear it, and it's lightweight, you can easily wear this all night, and it doesn't require charging other than every few days, you can get yourself some really great data on your overall sleep process and maybe work on improving that over time. Okay? So day, week, month is all available to you here. And that's just the first one. Get into heart rate. And of course, you've got a history. There's the ones that it said were slower. Look at that from all, all this morning, all yesterday, all my yesterday, every hour on the hour, it was taking a heart rate reading. And at 2100, it stopped then it picked back up at 6 a.m. it looks like and got probably my resting heart rate that's what my ring will tell me in fine detail wait till i really go into what this thing can do but uh, yeah there's sensors in here monitoring my finger and also calculating my heart rate regularly and producing a graph that actually is used to determine my nightly resting heart rate and from that deviation between the nights, it can make an assessment of my readiness, plus a bunch of other factors. But we're not talking the ring today. We're talking this wonderful E33. It's still not flapping on again. Hmm. Should just twist and light up. I had that set. I might have to do some finagling. It does work. I got to tell you that. It, it definitely does work. I turned it off earlier so I could demo turning it on, but of course, you know, it's not going to work for me then. Anyway, here's the hourly thing. I, I'm going to start this, but I'm, I'm not going to go all the way through. When you do single testing, it's going to activate the test in the, uh, in the watch. The diodes are actually lit up and blinking now, and uh, it's showing you this wave. And the wave is, uh, is a simulation. It's not any representation of anything that you're familiar with. It takes 30 seconds, 35 seconds to get you a stable heart rate similar to these. It averages them all over time. Bailing out of that, if I go in instead and say real-time measurement, you get this, this kind of, well, that's the result from the static one. Sorry, I guess it, it was just about finished. Real time goes in here and it's going to just keep that chart thing going. It's going to flash the heart rate on you and it will continue to show you that heart rate for as long as you have it in this mode. There, we're getting a heart rate from it right now. As long as you're within Bluetooth range, you're going to have that continuous rate. I say that because that works the same in all these others. If I go into blood pressure, I do single testing. It's going to do a 35 second test, give me a systolic, diastolic. Notice it's also giving me my uh, blood pressure every hour and it says normal over estimate. Blood pressure normal over estimate. I don't know what that means, but look at the numbers. It's uh, getting different numbers throughout the night. I honestly am not sure what would be about right. I'm guessing these 126, 124 are probably closer, but this is nighttime this is sleeping uh so i'm not sure uh anyway it's giving us blood pressure readings you'll need to work with yourself and your own cuff and your own doctor to determine how closely this correlates if it's closely tracking your blood pressure but it's off by 10 points or 20 points always too low but it's accurate if you added 20 points to it then you're getting an honest blood pressure it's just skewed off by a delta. You add that delta or subtract it, 
and you probably can use this as a guide for when you need to grab your cuff and do a more legitimate uh, reading. But just use this for estimate. When I go into real-time measurement here, and I wanted to show you the graph on this one, you see the same simulation graph that you do on the single test, but when you're doing it now in the blood pressure mode on continuous, it's going to give you a blood pressure reading after it gets enough data to make its initial estimate. And those numbers will stay there and change periodically as it's reading real-time blood pressure. We've wanted that. We haven't found it in any band. Leave it to a $15 band from Bakey to, to actually deliver with this new app. Uh, standard, regular, um, continuous heart uh, blood pressure. Now I'm bouncing all around and talking, so it's not really working for me. There, we're finally getting a number. Uh, hold on for a second, see if it shifts or not. Uh, it, when I've been doing it before, it changes about every five seconds or so. There, we had one shift. It's not going to record any of this anywhere. You're not getting a graph showing your uh, blood pressure dynamic change. You are getting uh, the data in here when you uh, have it tested automatically every hour or you do the one-time test, you're getting an actual data point. But I don't believe we're getting any graphs on that. Okay, so that covers blood pressure. Blood oxygen works same way. We have single testing, we have real-time measurement, and we have the accumulated data every hour. You should be above 94. Five, wow, I wonder if I've got sleep apnea. That's an indicator when you have low um, blood oxygen at night, right? Oh, wait a minute, that's in the afternoon, 13, 14, 15, I mean, I don't know. Again, not sure about the accuracy of the data either, but it is really collecting this stuff in a very usable way, which is awesome. Uh, we have here where you tap on that and it gives you some um, key points about setting up to test it properly. And I believe that's on each of these as well. Fatigue. Fatigue's another interesting thing. It's sort of like the blood oxygen and you've got that little circle that goes around. I'm gonna do a single test while we're looking at it. It's about a 20 second test and it looks like we get a number here. Uh, there's a smiley face and there's something looks like a cup of coffee. Uh, another smiley faced. I got a one and five down here when it's, oh, there are no more. Okay, when it's done, okay, I got a 17. And it's so, it says tiredness, uh, tiredness analysis this time. This time you're tired, stat mm, is good. You need to relax and possibly try some yoga or take some steam, okay. So each of these is giving kind of a little bit of guidance and it's showing you on a chart. In this case, the fatigue, the lower the number, the better the score. If you're way up here, it looks like it's in the red. And these things showing a cup of coffee may look like you're stressed out. I guess that's the indicator and the smiley face says you're calm. And so I just got a number uh, 17 that we just did at 1014. In between all of these regular ones that happen every uh, hour. And then there's the um, information about this too. Again, same basic thing, and you can click the start to measure right from there. Are you done yet? No, we have ECG, but before I get into that, if you wanted to do this whole thing one by one by one by one by one and check all of this stuff, that's a lot of time. And they're all using the diode, these four, for the same basic measurement. So why not combine them all together and get an instant reading of all of them by coming to this page that says measure. I love this about this app. This is so handy, okay? You don't see any activity. You don't see the funny little wave thing or the circle going around. And unfortunately, I don't have a countdown clock on here either showing me how many seconds it's gonna run. But what it is doing is using the feedback from the diode and whatnot, reflecting light off of the blood moving through your uh, wrist. And from that, determining with one set of algorithms your heart rate, another set your blood pressure, another set blood oxygen, and the final one, your overall fatigue level. Now, we just did all those measurements a moment ago. 
And so it should probably come back with very similar results. I have the watch on my arm that I'm holding the phone with and trying not to wiggle too much. You also have an export button here that you can send this stuff out through any of the sources you want. Just vibrated, measure is done, and there we go. Heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen, and fatigue level. And if I go into these, there it is, one. It gave me a fatigue level of one. I'm, I'm relaxed, but there, that was just three minutes. So, so each of these is now gonna have a new data entry at the time it was taken all of them simultaneously. That is sweet, and that you get to from that little measure thing up in the upper corner. Yep, we're gonna do ECG, I'm coming back to it. First, I wanna show you the weekly report before we leave all of this. Here it gets really fun. Tap on weekly report, and boom, you get a health score. The health score now, remember, I only have all day yesterday pretty much, and a little bit of this morning, um, so about one full day, including overnight, but enough to show you that when you come in here, you can get a uh, synopsis of averages for a daily uh, step count activity for a week. Okay, this is going to be computed for the week. You're going to have a sleep analysis for the whole week. Same thing with heart rate, although it's not filling that one in, and I don't understand why, because we've done both continuous heart rate and incremental, but that one's empty. Here on blood pressure, it looks like I've got two points, maybe one yesterday and today. Not sure how it's getting that data. Again, we would really need more to understand it. Blood oxygen, this is what I would expect. You're going to have a chart showing every hour or so. And then fatigue, it's giving me one number. Now, I can't go in any further to these, but it all of this stuff comes somehow together to give you that score that is your weekly health score. And you can go forward and backward week by week, and you can export that too. Email it to yourself or whatever you'd like to do. That's awesome. Now we get to the ECG part. This is the real, honest to goodness, ECG chart. I can do it by going into the mode on here, right? I activate it. I come over here. I come over here. I press and hold, and it's going to show a simulated chart on the screen while I hold the sides and uh, get the signal from behind to complete the loop. And when I do that, I can get readings that are recorded in the watch that can be transferred over by synchronizing to the app. And here are a bunch of them. Uh, a lot of these I did um, from the watch transfer, and some of them I did directly on the app itself, in which case you're activating it in the app, but it's causing it to start remotely in the watch. Either way it does it, you're getting a bunch of stuff. For example, here's the first one I did back at 10.03. Um, it says normal, 100, 100. I go into it now. I'm getting the playback of that ECG chart that I created at that time and it just goes and repeats over itself. It's giving me a, an assessment of the normal range, normal scope, fast or low, lower, too fast or too slow, what percentage of the time it fell into those categories, and rhythm scope. Folks, I have not seen this level of detail anywhere in any app for a $15 watch band. <laughs> well, I love it. I absolutely love it. This has become my favorite so far. Uh, health, uh, I won't call it health fitness because the fitness is really lame. We showed you that. It's, it's only going to do um, time versus calories, not even heart rate when you're exercising. So not the band to buy if you want a good fitness band, but definitely something you could strap on your other arm, whichever is your other arm, to do all these biometrics um, assessments. It's giving you... Uh, conclusions and judgments and all kinds of things to take with a grain of salt because it is not a medical expert but it has reviewed your chart and if I go to PDF I bring up the entire thing right here it determines the uh, whole thing and when I did this one I purposely took my fingers off of it and sure enough it went to flatline it was not getting any data continue to record mind you 
but it, uh, it, it dropped out there. Here's some abnormalities when I moved my fingers around, uh, just to verify that we are getting a real reading and not fake one. And just to point it out to you guys, if you find a watch that does ECG and it uses the app Fundu Pro, okay? That is a bad combination because so far I've seen three of them, I believe, two for sure I've tested. They're fake, totally fake. The fake symbols on the, the watch, on the app, uh, all of it is bogus. So I've done reviews on those two watches and the app. So if you see Fundu Pro, it's fun to fake, okay, as far as ECG goes. Whoops, I touched something. Uh, I touched that button. That's what happens when you determine generation of PDF. You bring up a box of whatever you want to send that out in, and you can then email or post it uh, however you'd like to any of your sources, depending on the apps that you have in your phone. You can send that ECG chart out with the information on it just like that. Very, very cool. It's even cooler in the fact that you can have at least two separate readings when you're uh, offline, away from the phone. Uh, I've done that already, and let's see if I can get this thing to switch. Gravity doesn't work sometimes on here. Okay, it's, it's taking time to refresh it uh, within its own memory, because I guess there's a lot of data for each of the readings. But when you do it, um, when you do the reading uh, directly in the watch itself and store it there, it'll say to, to look at the app for the results. And up until now, on all of the ones I've tested, you could, you're only good for one. You could do one reading and then you had to sync it in order to get it over here to clear it out so you could do another one. If you did a second one, only the most recent one would be st uh, stored in the watch. But I've had success of getting two stored in here and it might even be able to handle more and it'll transfer them over. So just to show you how it works, I can click to start it right here. It says start the measurement. It says device testing. I'm just holding the sides. There's the simulation you're seeing on the chart. Now, <laughs> it has this annoying beep about it, so you may want to mute your phone before you start this if you're doing it in public. That's a drawback. It's definitely something I would give them corrective action on. But you see the chart developing down below. That's the real chart, simulated chart on the actual device. Don't take your heart rate uh, or your uh, EKG and look at the only the watch and say, oh, I'm just fine because that is not a real chart. If I wiggle around or I take my hands off, it takes a little while to catch up here. It's a little behind, but eventually it does, and um, it's tracking what you're actually doing on this. So it goes for about, what, 30 seconds, 25 seconds, 35 seconds, I think. Should be flatlining here. There we go. Come back on to it. All right, it ran out of time. And now it's done. And so it's gonna play it back for you. It vibrated over here, uh, and there's your overall playback. And then it gives you its own uh, synopsis as well. Now with me messing with it and taking my fingers off, I would have expected some different information here than 100% perfect, which is why I recommend don't trust any of this, okay? If you think you may be having issues with your heart, don't rely on the ECG from any of these little, I mean, come on, $15, you're going to base whether you should take heart medicine or not? I don't think so. But it's giving you information to help you decide what to do as a next step. Just use it for guidance. But that's how it works. That's how the ECG is. You got the overall history on it, and that's all of your tabs here. We've covered that. We've covered that. Now, if I press in the middle, I, everything goes dim in the background, and I can literally take an exercise on the phone, uh, really independent of the watch. There's no GPS in this, but there is in here. So you can do your exercise there. You can find the bracelet. I tap that, and it's vibrating and flashing for me. And you can do the selfie photograph. If you push this, it puts this in camera mode, and uh, it says shake your watch, and when you shake your watch, it'll take a picture with the camera. So you can, you know, pose properly and just shake your, your wrist to get the picture taken. X bails out of that. And that, folks, is everything.
We've been there, we've been there, covers over either one of these screens, and we've been home. Really, really sweet app. I hope to see that on many more devices. Uh, but the one that, uh, that we're looking at today basically supports everything we need. It's the Bakey E33. It is available from Banggood. Please take advantage of um, the, the link in the show notes. And we're in a certain window right now. It's sort of like the Nielsen reporting for um, TV shows. Banggood's doing kind of an advertising assessment of how well the people they support, like this channel, are delivering for them. So I really encourage you to take advantage of the links right now. And I'm going to have a bunch of other links down below. And they asked me to put those there for their survey synopsis. If you uh, don't mind clicking on a few of them, if you see anything you like to buy, please do. Uh, all of that will help get high ratings so that I can get some more roosters outside. You hear them crowing? I love it. <laughs> it is definitely spring going into summer over here. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.